last week we talked a great deal about preparing for this day, the day that you're going to go in and meet people at the company. You're going to meet the person perhaps with whom you've been in touch for uh, a number of days or weeks uh, who has said to you, hey, we got your resume. We got your um, uh, we looked at LinkedIn, we, you know, we, we got your cover letter. Uh, we want you to come in for an interview. Okay, that's terrific. Now, at this point, I want to repeat some things that I said last week, because a lot of people get very disconcerted at the idea of going in for an interview. And the first thing I want to say is, if, if a company has said to you, we want to meet you, and we want you to come in for an interview. That means they like you. It means they like you. Of the, all the people that have ever applied for this position, they want you to come in because they think that you are qualified. That's why they're bringing you for, in for the interview. They want to see if their presuppositions about you, their assumptions about you and things like that are correct. And they're bringing you in because they think you're a candidate for the office, for the position, and they want to confirm that by asking you questions and getting to know you better. So it's a good thing that they're bringing you in. No one ever brings in someone for an interview they don't like. It doesn't work that way. They're not going to waste their time bringing you in if they don't think you're a good fit for the job. So if you get this far, they already think that you can do the job. They really do. But there's going to be a lot of other people that want to convince them that they can do the job too. And that's been proven by the fact that if they liked your cover letter and resume and LinkedIn profile and all that other stuff, maybe you had a phone interview first, and they liked that and so forth. There are other people that fit that bill as well. So you've got to impress them with who and what you are and how you present yourself. So in addition to all the other things we talked about last week, you know, knowing where this place is and getting there on time and dressing well, you know, dressing the part, dressing like you look like you already fit in and should be sitting down in the next hour and beginning work. So once you're in, and you've come to the office and you sit down and you're across the desk from this person, you've got to start really then sealing the deal that you are the person that they really have to have to hire. So now the questions begin, now the Q&A starts. And it's really, really important that you all understand when you are going to an interview, there are expectations on their part, obviously. So let's start with um, kind of an overview of what you're doing. Remember that you're there to market yourself. You're there to sell yourself. I know a lot of people are very self-conscious about talking about themselves and promoting themselves. Get over it because that's what you're there to do. You're there to convince them that you're the person they have to hire, not anybody else, you. And so in addition to how you present yourself and how you talk and your enthusiasm and your energy and good answers and all of that kind of stuff, that's all going to work together to create an impression of you that's going to make the impression on them that, that they want to hire you. So there's a couple of components to this. First of all, there is the first question that they're going to ask, often called the elevator speech. It is the question that 70% of the time or more, 70% or more of the time is the lead off question in any interview, tell me about yourself. Now, as I inferred last, well, I didn't infer, I came out and said it last week, tell me about yourself doesn't mean, oh, hi, my name is uh, Dr. Sheila Maxwell and I, uh, you know, I, uh, all the stuff they know about you, they already read from your cover letter to your resume to your LinkedIn profile. But this is a one to two minute sales pitch, if you will, of who and what you are. And most of it is going to focus not on stuff that talks about who you are and things like that. It's going to talk about all the stuff I don't know as your interviewer. Why are you who you are? Why are you what you are? 
what are the motivating things in your life that the, the passions which um, drive you in your field that compelled you to get the education and the experience and things like that that you have number two you're going to have to summarize a lot of stuff. You're not going to be able to um, talk on and on and on. Um, that means learning how to be succinct, learning how to identify the things that are important and not have to go into the things that are not important. Knowing not to ramble and when to shut down and finish a, an answer and not to go on and on and on. Um, in conclusion, also learning how to express at some appropriate time, maybe at the very beginning, your enthusiasm for the opportunity that they're giving you to come interview at their company. And that's one thing that a lot of employers we have found out at Adelphi have complained about is that on the one hand, they don't like the fact that a lot of students don't bring a lot of enthusiasm and energy to the interviewing experience. But a lot of them also either don't know a lot about the company, which is a big no-no, or they don't seem to show any enthusiasm for why they want the position. They can give a lot of good answers as to why they should get the position. They don't show the enthusiasm for the position. It was a big difference. So these are some preliminaries in selling yourself. Now, once we've mastered all of the, this other stuff, the stuff we talked about last week, the stuff we just talked about. You're in the office, you're sitting across from the desk and the questions begin. And the first one um, that I mentioned last week, more likely than not is going to be the first question they ask is this one called, tell me about yourself. So last week I said, please practice an answer to that. Think about what you want to say because this is really probably half the interview right here. In some cases, this can be half the interview. If you do well on this, um, you can flub a few others. You shouldn't, but you may, might be able to do that if you've done very well on this particular question. So if we were in a interviewing situation and I, had you across the desk from me and, and, and we're sitting and we're looking at each other and we're talking and, okay, well, Sheila, let's get going. Uh, Sheila, go ahead and tell me about yourself. I'm a passionate educator. I can remember going to SUNY O Westbury. My undergrad was business. There were no business um, jobs available. And I happened to just sub one day and I taught math until lunchtime and taught the kids how to actually do math, the same problem set using different methods. And ever since that day, I was all, I always found myself in a school teaching children. And here I am now, 30 something years later, still in a school teaching children. Folks, that was on my part and, and Dr. Sheila's part, completely unrehearsed. I didn't know what she was going to say, but that answer is a, is a Yankee home run out of the ballpark, over the fence, and going on over the Bruckner Expressway. So that, that, that was a great answer. That's what, folks, that's what you're looking for, an answer like that. Here's what I am. Here's what I'm all about. Here's what I'm passionate about. Here's what I really want to do. Here's maybe why I really want to do it here at this company or this school or this nonprofit or this whatever. That was a great answer. That answer is going to get them to, to kind of sit up a little bit. And, you know, you can tell by their body language, they may lean in and they're listening and so forth. But that's the kind of thing that's going to capture their attention. So, Janet, it's great to meet you. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you were able to make it in here to the Ivanov uh, a corporation. So let's get going. Uh, go ahead and tell me about yourself. Can I go second or <laughs> well, third? <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't practiced this, so which is not good. But if you let Janet one of Janet wasn't person... here last week. Oh, Janet wasn't here. I'm sorry. No. Um, I, I had said last week I wanted everybody to to, to think of an answer to this question. And, and Jill uh, still told me, she gave me the assignment. No, 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 you know what? But but uh, we can use this as a teachable moment. Um, 
because you were caught flat-footed by my asking that question. You didn't know I was going to ask it. But I want everybody to realize that when you go into a, an interview, there's a lot of questions that are on the table. There's some that are off, and I'll talk about those a little bit later. But um, it, you know, if you go into an interview and, and you've heard uh, uh, that guy from Adelphi say, uh, well, 70% of the time or more, they're going to ask you this question, then what you really need to do is practice and answer. Dr. Sheila, clearly, in my opinion, must have practiced and answer, know what she, knew what she wanted to say, because notice how she said it. The moment I asked the question, now put yourself in the shoes of an interviewer for a moment. The moment I asked the question, what did she do? That answer was coming out like this. It, it flowed right out of her. It, it seemed very natural. She spoke with some energy over it. Uh, it addressed a lot of questions I may have and things like that about motive and, and, and passion and things like that. But because she practiced it, she knew what she was going to say. Because she knew what she was going to say, it came out and there were no stuttering. There was no pauses. There was no what are called filler words. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm like, uh, you know, an educator and, you know, uh, it wasn't like that at all. So practicing your answers, not just to this one, but the whole bunch of us, uh, assumed questions, which we'll talk about here, uh, can only make you look like you prepared. And if you look like and sound like you're prepared, you're going to make a very distinct impression. Austin, can we go to you? I hope Austin is with us. I think Austin is with um, mom with the repass, the, the how. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. So uh, Edwina, can we go with you on this? Uh, Edwina, <laughs> welcome to the Ivanov Corporation. Uh, tell me about yourself. Oh, so I get on? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm a nurse because I've wanted to be a nurse ever since I was in the, about the sixth grade. I had an encounter with a nurse who happened to say, um, I'm going to take you home because I called your mother and she said she can't leave the, the other young children at home. So she let me stay in her office and sleep the day until uh, school was over and then she drove me home, which for most people it wouldn't have been a big deal, but for the fact that in my house, I was the one usually taking care of other people, it was a big deal to me. So uh, when I got older, I was determined I was gonna become a nurse. And uh, I took all the courses in high school and everything to become a nurse and started school and had to move back home because my mother needed me. So I quit, I stopped college and, but I was determined that's what, what I wanted to do. And even though I wanted to do it since I was a child, I was 30 years old when I accomplished it, but I was determined no matter what happened, no matter how many people said, oh, you've been talking about that for years, I was going to do it. So I got my nursing license at 30 because I was determined that was what I wanted to do. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you all some questions. So uh, go ahead and, and unmute your mics. This will be just sort of a free for all. Um, in Edwina's answer, what are your takeaways? What did you pick up on? You're, you're an interviewer now and you just listened to Edwina's answer. What did you take away from her answer? Determination. Yeah, what else? She used the word um. Right, the filler words. Yeah, there, there was a little bit of that. Edwina, had you had a chance to practice this answer? Uh, no, well, I did a little, but I just happened to um, fall asleep just before the class. Oh, and no. My, okay. And, and my brother just woke me up, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm supposed to be in class. 
Well, so, that's okay because you're rarely going to have an interview at six o'clock at night. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, but no, no, it, that is correct. I mean, the filler words you you definitely don't want to have them. But um, but the the determination was one thing. What else uh, did you pick up on? Storyline. Storyline. And what did that storyline tell you? What kind of person is she from her storyline? And she was determined to accomplish her goal. She didn't give up. She's very she likes clear. to help people. She likes to help people. What else? What that part about her family and, and I, I think Edwina, if I heard you correctly, there were other kids at home and you had to take care of them. Did I hear that right? Yeah. Okay, so, so responsibility, you know, um, things like that. There, are, there are a lot of uh, understand that you don't know what the interviewer is there. going to take away from your interview. Dedicated to yeah, others. yeah, yeah, yeah. So just just know that you don't know what the interviewer is going to take setting. away from your 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 answer. Because I feel like if What's you that? team up together, you can always conquer anything. Yeah. Okay. So. Let the uh, let the interview do do the takeaways, and the interviewer can take away a lot from from the answer. For example, that, that Edwina just gave. I'm just giving you an example of the kind of things that an interviewer might think about as part of the uh, the, the answer uh, process. Okay, Victoria, welcome to the Ivanov Corporation. Nice to have you here. Uh, let's get started. Go ahead and tell me about yourself. Well, I love people especially our youth. Um, I am a wife for nearly 28 years and I am the mother to um, two adult sons. And so my resume does not reflect uh, my passion for my family, my friends and helping those in need. It also may have a gap in it kind of, you know, you don't see the traditional, me in the traditional workforce after a while, because after I graduated, um, I did go to college, but I postponed it. I started doing photography and I was very successful at that until my first son came two months early, uh, changed my world. He was premature and touch and go, um, but he was my world. And so fast forward from the neonatal to special education to now celebrating his 27th birthday in July. Uh, and even six years after Alan was born, there was Andrew. And so um, I was employed at the time, but I decided to uh, take, take on my children uh, to be there in their development and their education and helping them and in helping them i realized in the school district that my sons were in the hempstead school district very challenging school district i looked around and i saw that there were a lot of other children that needed help as well so i became involved so for the last 27 years i've been the scepter PTA, the class parent, the chaperone, the child advocate on different committees and just in there in the trenches helping our children along with my two sons. And so they've since graduated um, doing multiple things now. And so during this pandemic, I decided to go back to school and um, so in May, I graduated and got my associate's degree in liberal arts. And now I am pursuing uh, my BS in community and human services. So there's a, there's a gap, but I think that all of those things that I did in those 27 years really have um, paid off. Wow. That is another great answer give me one word takeaways uh, you know we'll go around the, the the people on the call give me a one word takeaway uh to victoria's answer go amazing 
Amazing. Okay. What else? Commitment. Commitment. Heartfelt. Heartfelt. Dedicated. By the way, were any of you bored during her answer? That was a long answer. Any Anybody bored? <laughs> I wasn't. Victoria, that was a great answer. And, and it's a great example of a great answer that addresses the gap, the employment gap that a lot of moms tend to face raising children. You did a great, great job. Plus, in your discussion about your son, one of my takeaways was that you have faced and overcome adversity. That's right. I might want a, 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 a tough person who's overcome adversity to work in my company for whatever reason, and I may just have found it. That was a really good, did you practice that answer? I, I didn't practice it. I did what you said. I wrote it out and writing is visual for me. And, you know, when I write it, it helps me, you know, so I did not practice it, but um, I guess it's in my soul, it's in my heart. Um, whenever I talk about my children or any other young person, that's just anyone. I think a lot of the people here know who I am. They know how I feel when it comes to young people. And I don't know you. Um, and I, I feel that having heard your answer, I now know what your passion for youth is. Thank you. So you, you did very well on that. Good, good job. Uh, Lance, hi, welcome to the Ivanov Corporation. Glad you had a chance to come in today. Uh, let's get going. Go ahead and tell me about yourself. Well, I'm hardworking and a dedicated team player, which I formed throughout the years of my 26 years of my life. I am very passionate about helping others as much as I can, which I learned from my grandparents from taking care of them and taking care of most of my little cousins in my family. And that's it. Okay, that's a good start, but you'll want to talk a little bit more. Um, yeah. Like, in other words, what are you passionate about in terms of your professional development? Um, where do you see yourself in five years? H how, how do you see yourself at this company? Why did you apply here? Was there something about my company and our, our clients, our product, our services that attracted you to, uh, to uh, apply here for a job? Those would be examples of things that you could bring into your answer. Okay. It's a good start, by the way. It shows me dedication, sacrifice, and things like that. You know, you took care of your grandparents, you said. You took care of your little cousins. You know, you're a young man. You could be out doing whatever you want, and yet you chose to do those things. So that speaks very highly of you. That's a good start, but you're going to have to think about what you want to add that bring that those are great personal things you want to think about what you can add that brings you more into a professional groove that explains to me what, maybe why you're applying to the company and things like that okay okay good good start janet you had your your hand up yes a question though the only thing that he did do that i know that um technically we're not supposed to ask he stated how old he was um he can offer that information. They can't ask that information. Okay. Uh, since, since Janet mentioned this, we might as well say it now. There are certain um, uh, questions that interviewers cannot ask you. Okay. Uh, relationship status, marital status, uh, religion, uh, political affiliation. There's a whole list of them. And they cannot ask these questions by law and these laws were developed over the years primarily because women were being abused in in these kinds of situations um uh you know like um i know this is going to sound real icky but i'm going to pick on someone maybe josh shell you know uh josh shell i you know we had a really great uh time interviewing here uh, you know it's it's five o'clock why don't we go out and have drinks afterwards i mean it was that kind of stuff you know that, that, that was happening to, to women primarily. Um, and after a while, it, it got so abusive that uh, across the country, I don't think there's any state 
that does not have laws that protect interviewees, male and female, from being asked certain personal questions. So it's to your advantage. So correct. But you can offer it if it's pertinent, especially you might want to offer it. If I were interviewing for the Cedarmore Corporation, I might want to talk about my love for Jesus Christ and his church and so forth. That, that might be something that is very pertinent and very relevant to the interview. But that, you know, if I'm interviewing with a, a job for, uh, 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 um, you know, the government, I might want to talk about the government. If I'm interviewing for a job for the Republican Party, I might want to talk about I'm a card carrying member of the, you know, I, I may not want to say I'm a card carrying member of the Democrat party, you know, I, so there's certain things you can and cannot say by volition, by, by your will, it's up to you, but there's certain things they cannot ask and you do not have to provide that information. If you do get asked an uncomfortable situation, uh, your very direct response has to be something like, oh, I'm sorry, what does that have to do with this job? That's all you really need to say sometimes, and, and, and they'll shut up. Um, but anyway, yeah, Dr. Sheila, you got your hand up? All right. So I wanted to ask, with the um, COVID, you know, whether or not it is appropriate because of the HIPAA law to ask the employee or ask the candidate whether or not they've been vaccinated? No. Uh, my understanding because of HIPAA is no. You what you, you what you can say is we may be getting or we are at a point where we will be requiring vaccinations. If that's a problem, let me know. That's kind of a different way of saying it. And the onus now is not on you to be the boogeyman, but on them to reveal if they have a problem or not with that. Does, does that make sense? No, it does. I don't, okay. We don't ask that question anyway, but I know that is like a big question now because of everything that. that's going on. You know, you if, know I, if I was going to be a, a higher. Uh, if I was going to apply for a job at the local stop and shop, uh, that question would not have to even be asked because if you walk in and you see everybody, the, all the employees wearing a mask and the sign on the front of the, the door going in says, please wear a mask whether you've been vaccinated or not, or, or things like that. Sometimes you can just, you, you can listen to the news and you can see where society is going That's on true. stuff like that. The, 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 the um, interviewee should not be too surprised if, if the company is gonna be bringing that kind of stuff up, okay? So let's see, we left off, uh, Austin is not here. Joshelle, are you there? Can you see me? I can see you. Hi, Joshelle. Welcome to the Ivanov Corporation. It's great to have this opportunity uh, to meet with you and talk with you about the uh, the job. So let's get started. Go ahead and tell me about yourself. So historically, I have uh, worked as a project manager with the New York City of Department of Education, but I like to call myself a creative specialist. And so what that really means is I like to think outside of the box. I like to think of new ways to do things. So an example of this is a few years ago, we were given the task from our department to come up with an artifact. And so they wanted something that demonstrates our team, what we do and how it connects to the department and the company goals. And so in the DOE, there's a lot of different structures. There's a department, there's a division, and then there's the office. And so after talking to the team, they gave it to me and they said, come up with something that represents what we do. And so after thinking and reflecting and trying to come up with something that truly was creative, but represented what we do, I came up with the idea to do a fortune teller, that little paper game that kids used to play. And so what doing this fortune teller, if you look at it, it has many different layers. You have the outer layer, you have the inside where you have the first pockets, when you unfold the pocket, there's another layer, and then you have the foundation. And so taking this concept on the outside, we showed our team goals and the things that we do. On the inside, we showed how we line up with the division goals and how that all lines together. And then on the foundation part, on the center part of the fortune teller, it lined up with the framework, which is for the entire company. So we took something 
that was fun, it was simple, everybody could relate to. And then we used it as a way to demonstrate exactly who we are and how we use it to impact millions of people every single day. So when I say I'm a creative strategist, it's about looking at the big picture, but breaking it down into small details. And that's exactly what I look forward to being able to do here. Another outstanding answer. And what did Joshelle do in her answer that was so outstanding? She just she outstanding. found something relatable. Yeah, she did that. But, but specifically, what did she do? She laid she down a, a she laid down a claim, and then she gave a specific example to back up the claim. I'm a creative person, and let me tell you about a time I was very creative. And she launched right into it. She illustrated the point. Having illustrated the point, she went back to the claim, said it again. Uh, this just demonstrates that I'm a very creative person. Backed it up one more time and left the interviewer going, wow. So if you can ever tell your given answer, any answer, by the way, not just the one we're, we're practicing right here, but if you can ever give an answer with an example, a story, something like that to back up your answer in, 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 in a very specific way, if you can do that, the interviewer will be even more impressed uh, than merely by an answer that's been rehearsed and practiced, and which is delivered very well. If you can deliver more substance to the answer by giving a story like Joshelle like just did, and like, um, let's see, who else did? Vic who else gave one? Victoria gave one, I think, right? Victoria. Yeah, Victoria mm -hmm. gave that, that, yes. that, that example. Um, so that's really good. That that's that gives a you know I may be trying to think how am I going to you know the interviewer is thinking how might I challenge this person how might I I see if I can not I don't want to trip them up but I, I may want to challenge them in such a way so that they have to delve a little bit deeper. Well, Joshelle just gave me an answer that I can't delve any deeper into. She made the claim, she backed it up, she reiterated the claim, and and boom, that's it. And it's going to be very hard for me as the interviewer to go, oh, gee, okay, well, well oh, that's good. Let's go on. You know, I mean, that's all I can really do with that. So, Joshelle, good, good job. So, hopefully, you can see to this first question. Tell me about yourself. It's really important to try your best to hit it out of the park. Have this very complete answer. Uh, make a claim if you want. Back it up if you can. Uh, but talk about the who's. The, the who you are, the what you are, the where you want to go, stuff like that. Um, don't tell me what, none of you told me anything that I knew about you. You all went into stuff that I did not know about you. And that's exactly what you want to do with this kind of a lead off question. Now, this isn't the only question they're going to ask. And they might ask other questions. And most of these other questions that they're going to ask you are gonna be answers, uh, are gonna be very informative, but they also show your reasoning process, for example, uh, or your problem solving process. So for example, I'm gonna go back to Joshelle for a minute and I'm gonna say, Joshelle, that was a great answer. Thank you very much. Um, let's move on. Tell me about your greatest weakness. Now, before Joshelle answers, um, I want you to understand that this is a trick question. They don't care what your biggest weakness is. They really don't. I mean, don't tell them you, you know, smuggle guns and children over the Mexican border. That might not be a good answer, but everybody has a weakness. Don't say, oh, no, I don't have any weaknesses. I'm pretty, you know, I'm good. They're not going to buy that either. But the fact of the matter is, what is a weakness? A weakness is a problem. And what's the company going to hire you for? Hopefully to solve problems. So when you talk about this particular answer, you're talking about how you solve your own problems. So they wanna see how you reason through uh, describing your weakness. They don't wanna just hear about your weakness, they wanna hear what you're doing about it. 
So if you're a, a if you're horrible with time management, well, you got yourself a cell phone and a calendar, and you've got this to do list that you do every day, and you check off the stuff that you accomplish, and you know whatever your answer is. But my my problem is time management. But here's what I'm doing about it. So you're showing how you reason, and how you think, and how you solve problems. A lot of questions are like that. But the tell me about your greatest weakness question is the the best example of it. So, Joshelle, I'm going to go right back to you. Uh, Joshelle, um, tell me, what's your biggest weakness? If I had to say one of my biggest weaknesses, it would be I love to develop community. And so what that means is I love to focus on people in an environment. And so the way that's negative is sometimes I get focused on learning about the people that I work with so that we can create that sense of space. But the way that I'm trying to combat that is learning, especially in a management role, is learning each person's strengths. So that way I find out what they're passionate about and what drives them so that when I'm building that community, I'm also learning their strengths. So when it comes to delegating projects and things like that, I'm able to do it based off of their passions rather than just handing out miscellaneous assignments that people aren't driven by. So trying to refocus that time to learn, yes, about them, but also their strengths, their passions, and things that focus them so that we can be multi-focused during that time. Good. Some things you don't want to say with that answer, you don't want to say, oh, I work too hard um, and things like that. There's just some stuff they're not going to buy. But the whole purpose of that question is, uh, tell me how you reason through solving a problem. That That's really the, just like tell me about yourself means tell me what I don't know. Uh, um, what's your greatest weaknesses? You know, how do you reason through and solve problems? Now they could they could ask you a lot of other questions like, um, um, you know, where did you go to school? Why did you pick that school? Why did you pick your major? Uh, are you happy in your work? Um, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, uh, then they could also ask you sort of behavioral questions because some of you have been out in the workforce for a while, which means you know stuff, you're not just right out of college. And so they may ask you things like, um, Edwina, you're a nurse, right? Yeah, you are, right? Okay. Um, so if I'm interviewing Edwina, what I might ask her is, uh, Edwina, tell me about a time you had to deal with a difficult patient. Tell me about a time you had to deal with the difficult family of a, of, a, of a difficult patient. Tell me about a time that you saw another nurse. Uh, what would you do? Or tell me about a time when you saw another nurse give the wrong medication or, or administer the wrong, what you know, whatever. Um, uh, so in those kind of situations, they're assuming you, you've been through something like that because you've been out in the world for a while. And so they want to see how you have dealt with situations that you might have to deal with at their at at my company, at my hospital, at my school, at my company, whatever it happens to be. So behavioral questions usually begin with the the phrase "Tell me about a time when," and then they're expecting you to go, "Yeah, I, I not to say, well, yeah, I dealt with that, but to say, yeah, I dealt with that last year." Back in March, there was a problem. Here's what happened. Uh, and here's how I dealt with it. That's what they're looking for. State the problem, assuming it uh, you know, really existed. Don't make stuff up. Um, and here's how I dealt with it. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what if they ask me a question about a situation I've never had to face? Well, you don't want to make stuff up. That's for darn sure. But what you can say in answer to this question is you can say, uh, well, you know, I, I've never had to face that particular situation, but if I did, here's what I would do. Right. And then you can answer it. Yeah. But but this kind of these these questions tell me about a time when are looking for you to talk about real experiences that you've had and and what you've done to um, uh, to, to to deal with them. You know what what you've done to deal with them. So going. Um, Going back to these informational questions, um, you know, where'd you go to school? Why'd you pick your major? I, again, just remember that uh, you're going to have to reason through, give examples, give stories when you can, things like that. 
Um, there's also kind of a, in that genre, informational questions. There's also questions that go like this. Uh, Lance, um, uh, tell me what motivates you in life. Um, what mostly motivates me in life is, well, I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> um, now, Lance, wow, really? hold, on, hold on for just a second. Folks, based on his previous answer, what do any of you think motivates him? Remember family. his Something family. Is family orientated. Lance, we're not going to put words in your mouth, but your previous answer spoke volumes to us about your willingness to sacrifice for your family because of your great love for them. I'm not saying that's what you have to give as this answer, but that would be an example of something that would, you know, it's consistent with something you previously talked about, and it would certainly be a very moving thing that you can say. You, you can say whatever you want. I'm just saying that would be an example of something you could fall back on. Well, as I, reason, as, as I previously stated in dealing with my grandparents and my younger cousins, man, I got to tell you, family really motivates me a great deal. I love my family. We're all very close, blah, blah, blah. Um, that could be an example of something that you can talk about. Um, Janet, uh, Janet, what would motivate you in life? What motivates me in, my, in life is one, my relationship with God, but two, most importantly, my relationship with my family. I have a mother who's 80 years old. I have Joshelle, who's an adult woman. And then I have a little boy who is eight years old that we are co-parenting with him. He's our godson, but we've had him since he was born. So what motivates me every day is knowing that my family is doing well in this pandemic, that we're all surviving, we're coming through this pandemic. We're all dealing with issues. We've had major deaths in my family, over 20 members, um, biological blood relatives transitioning from COVID all in the South within about seven months. But when you determine that you're a conqueror, you decide in your mind, I'm gonna get through this. I don't know how, but I'm gonna depend on God. And he'll give me direction to get through whatever I need to do. So what motivates me most is my family. Just knowing that my mom is doing well. I have a stepfather um, that they're doing well, that Joshelle is doing amazing. She just graduated with her master's. Omarion, he's one of five children, but he's on a road to be much like Joshelle, I believe, when he grows up. We're already instilling him now. You're going to college. And just like I used to tell Joshelle when she was a kid, I told her, you have four years to get a college degree from when you graduate, you won't be a career student. And she did it. She did everything that she needed to do. So I told her the first degree was for me. The other four or five that she now has, those are all hers. I don't take any of them. But the first one I said was mine. So what Amen. motivates me? My family. Amen. That, that, that's a great answer. Now, Janet also did something at the beginning of her answer that I want to point out, and I hope you all caught it. I said, Janet, what motivates you? And she answered immediately by saying, what motivates me is. Now, why is that a big deal? Sometimes, even if you practice a lot of answers, you can get hit with a question that kind of makes you go, oh, what am I going to say to that one? And you don't quite know what to say. But you know what? There's a little technique. There's a trick to getting your brain focused on and working toward thinking about an answer. And that's repeating the question back as the beginning of your answer. Um, uh, you know, what motivates you? Well, what motivates me is, and at that point, even if you don't know what you're going to say, something is going to start coming out of your mouth. And it, instead of going, looking like, you know, you're a deer in the headlights and you just, uh, 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 you don't want to look like that. Repeat the answer back like she did. And believe it or not, your brain will start thinking about something because you've started to talk and the brain wants to continue talking. So that, that's a little trick and technique uh, that people in public speaking and so forth will tell you is, is something that works very well. 
Uh, there's a slightly related question that, that's worth asking. We'll play with this for a little bit. Uh, Victoria, uh, thank you for that question about what motivates you, but I'm gonna ask you a slightly different question. Uh, Victoria, um, who inspires you? Now, now, before Victoria answers, remember what I said earlier about illustrating your answers with case studies, examples, stuff like that. So Victoria may say, oh, my, my, my father inspires me. Okay, <laughs> Let, let's hear some more. So, well, my father inspires me uh, and that's because, and then she goes on to give the example. So Victoria, what inspires you or who inspires you? Many people that inspire me, um, but my mom, because she's a strong woman, um, uh, my pastor inspires me, my, my late pastor inspires me, my children and my family inspire me. Okay, let me stop you right there. I'm sure they all do. What you're going to want to do with when practicing this answer is focus on primarily one thing, one, one, one person. Oh. And then and then talk about why. Now, for example, you mentioned Bishop White. I know enough about him to know why that might be the case. But you would want to talk to me as if I didn't know about that and say, well, my my late pastor inspires me. His name was Bishop White, and he was this kind of a guy. He was this kind of a man of God. He was this kind of a pastor. That would illustrate to me, again, I want to see how you think and reason through an answer and how you think and, and why you think the way you do and things like that. So um, be careful about examples. Examples are good, but for most answers, one example or one, one uh, story will be most likely sufficient. Uh, so uh, I'm just gonna ask one or two more general questions and then we will um, uh, move on to some closing thoughts. Um, so you've got these informational questions for which, as I've been saying, having a, an example or a story or something like that is really good. You've got the behavioral questions, tell me about a time when. Uh, so you're gonna have to be familiar with everything that's on your resume because you could possibly talk to uh, that answer from right off your resume. Um, we mentioned the questions that can't be asked. You're not obligated to ask questions like that. The questions that can't be asked. Um, and then um, you're, you're gonna wanna be careful of a couple of these things right here. And I think I mentioned last week, uh, in addition to not answering your phone, I mean, your phone really has to be off and, and tucked away where you're not gonna respond to it, whatever. But if you look in the upper right-hand corner, uh, it says dissing their previous job. We could add to that dissing your previous boss by by name. Um, you never want to look unappreciative of the fact that you worked someplace else. And no matter what the reason why you left, and it could be for reasons that are all in your favor, you, you don't want to uh, uh, diss your previous boss or your previous company. Now, what if they ask you, why are you leaving your current position? Uh, this is an opportunity to take a trap and turn it around. The trap could be, yeah, I, I want to leave my current position because they're all, you know, sons of whatever, and I, I don't want to work for them anymore. No, turn it around. Well, I, I'm leaving that job because I hope to come to this one. And so you can talk very positively about not where you came from, talk very positively about where you're going and why you want to get there and, and how you're hoping that this new job uh, gave you the inspiration to leave your old one because you hope to, to, to further your career uh, promote your career by, you know, whatever. Uh, don't talk about where you came from. Talk about where you're going and, and try not to uh, say negative things about your former employer or former boss. Those sometimes can be trick questions. Why are you leaving the position you're in? Okay, um, some questions. Uh, here's what's going to happen after they're done. They're going to come to a point where they're going to say, Okay, um, Edwina, we're, we're done with all, I've, I'm done with all my questions. Um, let me ask you, do you have any for me? Now, you don't want to say, you do not want to say, oh, no, I'm fine. You know, how much are you going to pay me? <laughs> you know, you, you don't want to go on to that. You actually want to have some questions for them. 
now what kind of questions for them well don't ask about salary that that's that's a big no-no not yet but um what does the typical day look like i know what i'm gonna do that's in the job posting which i have right in front of me you printed it out and you have it there right in front of you i know what i'm gonna do but what does the typical day look like what are the of these eight things i'm gonna do what are the the top three things that are most important um Who's going to be supervising my work? How often will I be getting feedback on my work? How will I know how I'm doing? Um, uh, well, what is the uh, uh, career advancement ladder here at the company? Um, what, what are the opportunities for um, uh, further education? Do you have uh, a, a training that you offer your employees? There's, there's a lot of things you can ask. Think of something. Think of questions that are important to you that you would hope at this company they're going to have uh, answers for and that really going to make it much more attractive for you to want to work here does that make sense have at least i would say maybe three questions that you can ask and 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 think about you know at the end you know don't be afraid to ask questions don't be afraid by the way another by the way during the interviewer's uh, questioning of you, if you are, are a little nervous and everybody's a little nervous when they go into interviews and you don't hear the question properly or you forgot it or whatever you know happens because you're nervous, it's okay to say, oh gosh, that's a good, that's a good question. But could you ask that question again? I want to make sure I understood it properly. That's fine. That's fine. Um, it shows that you're listening. They like that. If you begin to answer a question and you really flub up and you go, oh, that's not what I wanted to say. I'm so sorry. May I start again? They will say yes. Okay. It shows that you can make a, uh, a you, you uh, flubbed up something and you had the humility to admit. And now you're asking if you could try it again. That's fine. That's going to make you look good, not bad. Okay. So you ask your, they've asked their questions. You've asked your questions, he's done, you're done, uh, and now the interview is basically kind of over. Uh, just know that if they do not bring up salary, neither will you. When they're ready to talk to you seriously about bringing you on board, salary will be brought up. But don't bring it up yourself. In the meantime, make sure that you use some of these websites noted here to do a little bit of research on what people in your position living on Long Island who are your age category and working in the field X number of years and so forth. You can look up all those different kinds of parameters and filters and go, oh, if I work at this company based on this research, I should be making uh, in the mid 60s. So when they ask you, what do you want to make? You say, I want to make in the high 60s. And they go, oh, well, we were thinking the low 60s and then you compromise in the mid 60s. So um, salary negotiations tend to scare people a lot uh, because, and, and people tend to also either lowball themselves or they tend to be very unrealistic in highballing themselves. So that's why you wanna do your research to know if they ask me what I wanna make, if they don't already post that in the job posting itself, government jobs already do that, for example, You've got to know what you're gonna what you're gonna make and what you're willing to be paid. What not what you're willing what you deserve to be paid based on your experience and things like that. So there are a lot of places where you can find out this information. One other thing, when you finish, you may at that point get up. You're shaking hands, whatever. Get their card. Get the interviewer's card. Why? Because when you get home. You want to make sure you send that person a thank you email. Doesn't have to be long, two or three sentences. I want to thank you for the opportunity you've given me to interview with the Ivanov Corporation. I really, really enjoyed that, and I look forward to um, you know, you know, whatever you come up with something nice. But since less than a third of those that go on interviews do such a thing, uh, you'll be seen as someone who understands courtesy and believe me interviewers appreciate courtesy and this is one great big way to, to, to show it also it's okay for you to ask them 
what's your hiring deadline? When do you expect to make a decision on this position? That's fine. You can ask that. That's perfectly fine. That gives you a lot of um, leeway because you may be thinking, well, I have an offer already from another company. You're not going to tell them this, but well, I already have an offer from another company. Hmm. And they say, well, we're not going to make a, 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 a decision for another month. Well, you've got the one offer already. Maybe this company is your number one choice, but what if they say no? And in the meantime, the other place waiting for you to make a decision then says it's too late. The offer has been rescinded. So you can ask them what their hiring deadline is. You don't want to uh, miss opportunities that come to you from all, all sources. Okay. A um, couple other things. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. So ultimately, uh, in this whole thing, whether writing a, a cover letter, resume, getting your LinkedIn up and running, preparing for the interview, uh, you know, you're going to be doing your research, finding out as much as you can about the company, uh, researching the position, make sure you clearly understand it. Keep in mind that during the Q&A time earlier, uh, there's a couple questions they can ask you that doing your research is going to really be helpful. Tell me what you know about our company, for example. Um, uh, why should I hire you? And by the way, the worst answer you can give to that one is, well, I'm a good worker and I'll show up on time. Uh, -uh you know, no, we all, we expect you to be a good worker and we expect you to show up on time or we're going to fire your, your, your self from this job. So it can't be that it, it, it has to be, I've got this job posting right in front of me. Here's what I need to do. Here's what you're going to be hiring me to do. Here's how I've already done it. I've already done this stuff at the other company. If you're looking for these qualifications. I already have them. Here's some examples. So why should I hire you uh, for the job? It is very similar to the question, why are you the best person for this job? You're not talking about your personal characteristics and you know you love children and you got a puppy at home and uh, you're gonna show up on time. It's gonna be, here's the job posting. You have it right in front of you and you're gonna walk through it and show them how you can do this job better than anybody else. So you're talking about the job posting, nothing else when they ask that question, why you? You know, why do you want this and so forth? Examples, study, uh, case studies, stories. Stories are the personal stories are always the best. Uh, we heard some really good ones today. Never be afraid to talk a little bit longer rather than a little bit shorter. Longer is better than shorter. Uh, if you're too short, they may, be, they may think that your, your verbal communication skills are limited because you don't know how to talk. That could work against you. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you do have a time in the interview when you can do that. Uh, but certainly, um, if they ask you a question and it elicits some intense curiosity on your part, you can stop and ask them a question about the question they just asked you. Uh, and, and right now, I had an example I was going to give you, and it just slipped my mind, and I apologize for that. But there are circumstances in which that is perfectly fine. And finally, <clears throat> have enthusiasm and uh, and a lot of energy uh, for this position you're you're being hired potentially for something that can change your life this may be the thing you've waited 20 years or 30 years for be excited about that opportunity and show them that you're enthusiastic and have a lot of energy that you can bring to this position because they don't see that as much as you may think they do they don't and a lot of the, the lack of that concerns them. So if you're gonna be working at a new school or a new hospital or whatever, boy, are you excited to be working there? And you're gonna try and express that as best you can in your answers and by your energy level and things like that. Okay, um, I think we are just about at the, the one hour mark. Um, I wanna see if we can stop and and, if, see if anybody has uh, questions about this part of the interviewing phase. I, I wanted to spend two sessions on it because preparing for uh, going there and then actually going there and preparing what you're going to say can be two different things. And I think we, we've spent the time on it. 
but I want to now ask if any of you have any questions. How many of you have been to an interview where you knew you blew it? And, and do you remember what answer or what question you blew? Does, does anybody have that experience? Yes, Dr. Sheila. No, go ahead, please. I want I to hear the story. for me, I had worked all week. It was a last minute interview. Oh. And the person um, basically gave me the interview like maybe in an hour. And oh. I was on my regular job. So I was so busy there. It was a Friday. So many things were going on. I, I just, I could not get my thoughts together. I was mentally exhausted because that was just a full, you know, it's a full week with a lot of planning, a lot of scheduling, a lot of different types of meetings that I was just, I was just wore out by. I got to the interview and I said, I will never do an interview again after working all week in on a Friday after work. Yeah. It's you know, too much. if they call you, yeah, if they call you and say it's, 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 it's 11 o'clock and they go in the morning and they go, uh, Sheila, can you come in for a, a, a three, four o'clock interview? Just say, no, I can't. Because sometimes that's the little game that some interviewers, I think it's a mean game they play. Um, they probably, they see, they kind of figure, well, you apply to our job. You should be expecting to be called in, but not like that. I can't but just you drop know what? Someone called me and told me about the job that morning. So by the time oh. I sent it in, the person called me i didn't know they were going to call me on the same exact day like i hadn't even really had a chance to wow. process anything <laughs> so it, it was not good i wouldn't do that again good for you anybody else have an, have an experience they'd like to share well i i've got one I, and you might find this interesting and it kind of actually illustrates a lot of the things we've been talking about uh, about 20 some odd years ago i applied for a job and about over 200 people applied for this job and it was an account manager's position. I was coming from an account manager's position. I wanted to get a new one and, and this is what I was applying for. Over 200 people applied to the job. After a phone interview, um, a first round interview and a second round interview, it came down to a third round interview between me and another candidate. So it came down to two people, me and another candidate, third round interview. I found out the next day I did not get the position. And, and this is something I, I want to use for illustrative purposes. I said to them, um, you know, I wasn't mad and you can't be mad if you don't get picked. It doesn't mean they don't like you. Always remember this. If they don't pick you, it doesn't mean they don't like you. It means they just liked someone else more. So don't take it personally. Now you can turn this into an incredible learning experience. So I said to them, oh, thank you very much. I really enjoy this. It was, it was such an honor to make it to the very end like this. Um, but can you tell me what did I do? What, what did I do that I could have done better? Don't, don't say what did I do wrong, but ask them what did I do that I could have done better? And they go, well, you know what? It came down to they had a point system that they were uh, attributing to every question they asked. And at the end of the point system, it came down to one question. The other candidate answered one question better than I did. And I said, can you tell me what question? And you, you got to believe 20 some odd years later, I remember that question. Just like when I was once on a game show and I lost the, the, the game. I lost it on one question at the very end. And I, to this day, 40 years later, I remember that question. So there are, there, these can be learning experiences, even when you don't get it, because then the next time you go, uh, God willing that you've learned from that and you know <laughs> what not to say or, you know, whatever, but ju just understand that it's not, if they don't pick you, it's not because they don't like you. They may like you very much. And if that other person hadn't been applying, they may have picked you. So it always comes down to they're going to make a decision based on what they think, who they think is the best person for this position at this company at this time. Now, a lot of um, a lot of companies, if they like you uh, and they don't pick you, you know what you can say if you hear from them is, you know, I really appreciated the opportunity to interview with this guy. You guys got a great company. 
I hope one day I can work there. If another opening occurs, would you keep me in mind? They like hearing that because boy, you know, why do we have to really struggle to go look for people? Because think about this, it costs money for HR people to interview people, it, time and money, you know, background checks and all that stuff. So if you really want to work for them and you express that as part of your statement of appreciation, having not gotten the job, uh, they may actually come back to you. And I've known students at Adelphi University who have been in exactly that position. And it's a great position to be in. Hey, keep me in mind if something else comes up. Three, four months later, something did. And I've known students who got the job. So be positive. You know, if the Lord wants you there, I can say this because I'm talking to, some, to Christian people. You know, if the Lord wants you there, you'll be there. And it may not be this month. Maybe it'll be next month or next year or whatever. But if the Lord wants you there, he'll make it happen. So just always remember that. And sometimes in order to work there and be a really good employee at that new company, we, need, we might need to learn patience. And so that's the lesson we're learning right now. But just keep all that in mind.